How's the stuff so far? You guys having a good time? Yeah? Good. Excellent. This is amazing. I love this place. I love coming here every year. Uh, we have an amazing set of panelists here today. Um, as you were introduced, I think actually your game was not 1 million, it was 100 million players. Yeah, it's kind of the same. Same thing, 1 million, 100 yeah, million. Yeah. Not, okay. <laughs> but we're here to talk about AR, augmented reality. And when we kind of spoke the last time, I, I asked you, okay, but what is AR? What is your definition of AR? Why does it matter? Do you want, you want to start? Sure. So, I mean, it's a little bit self-explanatory at the beginning, like augmented reality. So I view AR as anything that changes reality in some way, shape, or form. Um, so then that's either from a camera perspective, as most people normally know it, but then even from a like sound perspective, um, or even location-based in the case of, say, games like Ingress, Pokemon Go for us. OK. And what you, what would be a, do you have yeah, the same well, definition, Tor, yeah, or a different no, one? Well, I, you know, people are often talking about AR and VR. And I kind of feel that when you talk about VR, we're talking about creating new worlds or like putting someone in a new world. Whereas AR, we are more enhancing the current world or the real world. Yeah. And there's a you know, big difference of, of those two things. But yeah. OK. So enhancing the current world, all that sort of stuff, looks super nice. But Ross, when I was speaking with you backstage, you told me like, AR is like candy floss, right? <laughs> You've got this huge hype around AR, a bit like the same way that you had this big hype around VR, right? And virtual reality hasn't become mainstream. It was going to be the next, next big thing. Is AR just hype as well? Uh, well, if you think about anything that, for any hype, there's always the kernel of excitement behind it. Um, so then there's the promise and the vision of where AR is going. So I always think about having everyone like a, a personalized world that they want to see the world as they, um, as that they would prefer to have. So at least in terms of hype and everything, it's more people believing in the promise of it. Um, a lot of the technology is really, really difficult. Like the world is the biggest variable that you've ever seen, um, literally. And then it, in terms of offering the technology to get us up to the stage that everyone can have the experiences that they want, like there's still a gap in between there at the moment. So I wouldn't say that it's necessarily hype per se, but I would say that people are really believing in what it can be. And then right now, there's literally billions of dollars being spent in the industry trying to move us towards that vision. But wasn't that the same case with VR? For VR, uh, one of the difficult things with VR is the device adoption. So you end up with the chicken and egg problem of, OK, it'll be cool if everyone can have it. But then you need to have the applications um, to then drive the devices. So then they've been stuck in this interesting chicken and egg problem, which, again, like Facebook is pu pushing a lot of money into that. Vive is doing a lot of really great work. So that will eventually happen. It's just slower. For AR, we're seeing a lot more adoption now because you have the mobile stage first, and then that will be leading into headsets in the future. OK. Tor, what do you think? Yeah, I think the problem with why AR isn't mainstream. So first of all, I don't think it's a hype. I, I feel like you know, the first time I, I got you know, enchanted with, with AR was I, when I saw Terminator 2, the movie. And you could see through his like, visor, you could like, identify everything on the screen. And they were just, this is awesome. Why isn't this a real thing? But the problem is still, I mean, I think most of the technology is there. I think the devices is the biggest uh, problem. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that you know, the problem with VR was that those glasses or those like, headsets, like, before they can get mainstream, they just need to be a little bit more cool. I know this this sounds, but I know it, it can't be so dorky, and there are yeah. so many examples of, of that kind of of evolution, like for other technologies. For example, like you know wireless headphones. Everyone uses wireless headphones now, the AirPods. But that kind of technology has been around for ages. It was like these. Do you remember those Bluetooth big headphones that you yeah. put on and you kind of looked like a Star Trek character? Yeah. I mean, it's been around for ages. It's a really great technology, but it wasn't really until Apple brought you know, pretty cool headphones with the AirPods that everyone started using them. And I think the same kind of evolution is going to happen with VR, that first it's going to be these big bulky headsets, but as soon as people will have something they want to wear, 
it's going to you know, become mainstream. OK. So if you think about what's holding AR back, from what I understood, you're saying technology in some, some way, and you're saying also devices. Um, is that the only thing that's stopping it from being widely used in gaming and in other industries, or you think there's other things that are stopping it? Uh, well, I think that there's three components that are kind of the main barriers to entry. So then one is the devices per se, like kind of right now mobile phones are a great kind of way to get your feet wet yeah. um, and really explore the initial applications of it. So I'd say getting the devices set up. The second one, which is what we at Niantic are extremely interested in, is the data aspect, because you need to understand reality in order to augment it. Yeah. So then building up that kind of data layer on top of the world, thinking of it a little bit like a, an operating system on top of the world. Yeah. And, and, and for that, you had a head start with Google Maps, right? Yeah, yeah. So then the yeah. founders of Niantic were actually one of the original people that helped, or that Google acquired um, to then build Google Earth, Google Street View, Google Maps. Yeah. Um, so then the data layer, I think, is another major portion, which is what we're really going after. And the third one, I'd actually say something that Snap is uh, pioneering is the social aspect, the social acceptability. Because Google Glass, when it initially came out, well, it kind of got grouped into the augmented reality world. It, it really wasn't cool. They were called, like, uh, not sure I can say this on stage, but glass holes. Um, <laughs> so then getting that social component so it now becomes OK to get to what Thor was saying, that it's now cool to use it. Yeah. And I think the social aspect is something that you at Tea Time are working on a lot. So you haven't released yet what you're working Not on. Yet. It's super secret, but I've seen it. Yep. So yep. can I say one or two things? Sure. I mean, <laughs> just don't show anything here. <laughs> <laughs> so my thing from what I've seen is you've, you're truly making a Tea Time um, AR truly social. You really turning it into a truly social experience. And for me, when I, when I first saw it, it felt like magic. Yeah. A as a player, and B of course as an investor and all that sort of stuff. But I thought really it was, it was magic. Can can you tell us why social is so important in AR and why you think that could be key to making well, it mainstream? Yeah. First of all, I think we should always look at AR as two things basically. It's augmenting the environment, and then yeah. it's augmenting yourself. Yeah. And you know, even though we do have apps now where you use the device to like look through the device and augment the reality, the phones are not, I feel, a good device to do that. But you know, the biggest AR application so far in the world is probably Snapchat or Instagram, yeah. where you're augmenting yourself using like beauty filters, which I love. They, they, my pictures are much better when I use beauty filters. Uh, so we decided to use that aspect more, and at tea time. Uh, we are trying to create like a new platform of social games where people are actually playing each other through mobile using video chat while playing. Mm -hmm. But on top of that, you put all these different types of AR filters. And you could probably say that, first of all, it's good to be able to make yourself more pretty because people, you can't underestimate people's vanity. But also, it's a great tool to get people into character, to fulfill the fantasy, so to speak. So if you're, if you're playing like a, a space-themed game with another person, and you can see that person live and talk to her or, or, or him, and you can choose from all these different space helmets and choose different backgrounds, and it just makes all the difference. And in our experience, like using AR to help people socialize and help people break the ice to talk to one another is just magical. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to bringing our products out uh, next year. Okay, and so I mean, obviously, you guys come more from a, a games background, and I think I think it's fair to say that what there is already a mainstream AR product, but then the AR kind of uh, snobs will say it's not really AR, which is your product, Pokemon Go, right? Yep. Um, so if you think about outside of games, right? Are there other areas where you see AR becoming potentially mainstream, or is it just going to be games and it's going to take, take a long time to go into other areas? I mean, for the entrepreneurs out here that are thinking about AR, what should they be working on? What could be interesting other than games? Uh, well, at least to defend Pokemon Go in a way, um, because Sorry. it's like 
<laughs> large portion of the AR. Hey, I'm market. level 28. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, like it does, uh, building on what Thor was saying, it does fulfill the fantasy. So one of the things that I view is really important for anyone developing an AR for gaming or not is think about what is the application and how does that how does augmented reality actually help that? So right now, there's this big push in Silicon Valley of, oh, we're doing AR for X, in a sense. And I think it's actually the wrong approach. You need to flip it on its head. And what is something that augmented reality can actually benefit from? So to get to your main point on what is AR useful for outside of gaming, I found that there's like kind of three value propositions. One, for gaming, it fulfills the fantasy. Like people catching Pokemon in the real world like yeah. actually makes the game more sticky. Um, I view it's also useful for instruction. So showing people, hey, here's how you operate this machine. Here's how you build, like, in the future, you could say this, IKEA furniture, um, educational aspects. And the third one that I view, is, um, I view will be one of the mainstream applications is visualization. So I think that the first killer app of headsets is going to be laptops, where you can have a small uh, keyboard, a mouse, and a 100-inch uh, screen in front of you. And like, I'd pay $3,000 for that. So games, instructions, and visualization. Yep. Yeah, one of my dreams, I, I'm sure it exists, but I can't find it, is to have a ski mask that tells me all the information, how fast I'm going, yeah, and all yeah, this yeah. sort of stuff, and all that. It's, or a motorbike mask with you know, Google Maps on it. And, but I can't find that. Not yet. Why? Not yet. Not yet. I, I, I think, and I've been thinking about AR a lot since Terminator 2, yeah. I think it's going to be uh, more revolutionizing than we actually think. I, I feel like, like 40 years ago, office workers didn't have computers. They just used you know, pen and paper. Then the computers came along, and their productivity was like multiplied. Uh, but that's just for office workers. We still have lots of different industries where people are you know, working on their feet. Doctors, you know, carpenters, plumbers, all these different types of in uh, industries. And they have not been able to take advantage of sitting down uh, with a computer uh, because they're working on their feet. Just imagine, I think that AR is going to be the same revolution for these types of industries as the computer was for the office worker. Just imagine a carpenter having his hat set on, knowing exactly, measuring everything just by looking at it, seeing where to put the nail, seeing the model being built in front of him, being able to visualize everything. And this, this is for doctors, this is for you know, so many applications. So I do think as soon as the devices are ready, AR is going to be a huge part of everyone's lives. And so if we take it down the level, and right now I want to start in AR, I've got a startup, I want to start something, what do you do? You just use AR Kit, AR Core, and then you do something with that, do you build on top of it, do you do your own tools? Uh, I mean, what's your recommendation there? Uh, well, at least right now, augmented reality is in the early stages, so then there's a lot of opportunity for kind of exploring like what is on. So like what are the core platforms associated with it? Like AR Kit and AR Core, they're more kind of base technologies on the kind of like we're working on our real world platform, like the data side, um, to build up the kind of large scale applications that people can do. But at least in terms of what are the specific technologies that are needed, I would say that's not even a solved problem yet in terms of, oh, here are the five things that you'll need for any AR application because People are still building out the applications. They're figuring out what are all the tools that they need. So I actually think for startups, there's a lot of interesting areas that, as they say, oh, I want the world to look like X, and what are the things that I need to get in there? And probably there's a couple thousand other people out there in the early days that don't know what X is yet, or don't know the steps and how to get there. So I think there's good applications that are out there now. We're building our own platform based off of our immense experience from uh, building AR. But, uh, so you mean external developers will be able to use Niantic technology? Is that yes. what you're saying? OK. Yes, it's the same here. I mean, we're really early stage yeah. on the technology. And AR Kit and AR Core are really good. But there are still a host of problems with that. And as we're so new, there is such a big opportunity for new companies to come out with all sorts of innovation. And for us, for example, uh, we are working with a couple of, of startups in that space to make our experience even better. And then. Of course, also, when you have the two tech giants, Google and, and Apple, making their own uh, stuff, uh, cross-platform compatibility becomes a problem. And for us, as we're on the, on the mobile space, we need to be able to have everyone play you know, one another. And that forces us to invent our own technology and work with other great companies. But just as Ross says, it's so early. 
and there are so many, like, it's such an opportunity for new companies to come in and, and, and just make something completely new. Yeah. So it's an exciting space. I have a lot of more questions, but I want to start taking a few questions from the audience and then mix it in. So there's a few that I think are interesting that came in. Um, one of them is, and maybe it comes back to the definition as well, and the question is mixed reality versus augmented reality. I think, I think A, what's the difference? <laughs> and B, uh, you know, so what at do you least think? Like I started my company, which was acquired by Niantic about a year ago, on, and then it's been interesting seeing the different trends where there's this big push towards everything is mixed reality, and then Pokemon Go was more augmented reality, and it was right. like this mixed reality connects it more. And then when Apple came out with AR Kit, then it became, oh, now it's all augmented reality, and now it's, there's still confusion within the market. I don't really see a full difference in between the two of them. Yeah. Um, like, you're mixing reality or you're augmenting it, you're, you're still changing it. So I view it's a little bit of terminology. And I think there are some companies, uh, I think Magic Leap and Microsoft, that are pushing for more mixed reality. And then Apple was like, no, AR. And now it's, it's kind of a fight in between there. But I view it's a little bit more semantic than it is a hardcore definition. So we should call it change reality then. <laughs> <laughs> no, magical reality. Magical reality, yeah, I like, I like that. that. It, I mean, it's so magical. Again, this is, yeah. you know, this is such a sci-fi stuff you, where, you see, where you're seeing augmented reality applications. So I think there's, you know... Do you think the thing that's missing maybe for it to really go huge is that what you just said, is that magical element is still hard to find and get by and all that? It, well, it, uh, again, sorry, it's, it's, it's the devices. I mean, I remember yeah. when Google Glasses came out. And I know there are people here from Google, and I'm sorry about that. But I got so excited when I saw the glasses were coming out. And I imagined it was some sort of an overlay. It was, you know, was the AR dream, being able to use Google Lens, walk down a street, look at the restaurant, see their menu, see like all of these things that we've been, been promised. But then it just, you know, kind of sucked. And it looked really dorky, sorry. And, and <laughs> I mean, this is just what we're waiting for. We're waiting for that, you know, device that feels natural to use. So what, the phone is not the right device? No. Well, it depends on what is the application. <laughs> so then if you want to have, you want to catch Pokemon in the real world, like, and you have hundreds of people to do that, like, yeah. the phone is a great device. So I think it depends on, I think that once you have these devices, once you have the, the data associated with it, then there will be immense opportunity and we will see explosive growth on the level of the smartphones. Um, at least for getting adoption today, it depends on it. Like, you want to say, is this a magical experience? Like, we've given a demo at Escher, my, my company before, to a four-year-old where there was a flying squirrel that was flying around in there, and she was looking at the phone, and it was this amazing experience where she was like, looked at the phone, looked around the phone, went back, so it was like reverse peekaboo, mm -hmm. and yeah. she was just blown away, and then, like, it was really magical to her, um, and we kind of viewed it as like this window into the different reality that you want to see, and so I think the magic is there, but, OK, for a four-year-old, seeing a flying squirrel is a wonderful application. They can play around with it. Their imagination goes wild. Once it starts to get useful and is used in many other applications, then we can begin to see this more gradient of improvement towards I, I, I just do add on to that. I think the phone is going to be a great device to do the front-end camera, to like augment yourself. And I think, of course, we're going to be able to get magical moments using your phone and like looking at the table, as you've seen in the demos. But I think it's just too cumbersome you know, to get really mainstream. And I, I no, really and, think that and, for... And from an investor perspective, there's no money in it. Oh, okay, yeah, you yeah. You have fun yeah. for that two seconds, course. you look at something, how yeah. do you monetize exactly. that? Exactly. I, I think that, you know, again, I, I, I still think, and, and I know that maybe Pokemon Go is, is the, I mean, it's the only really successful AR game that's using the, that, that mm -hmm. part of the camera, but I think that for AR, and I've said this like three times <laughs> today, yeah. but I, I think that using the phone to like hold it like this is is kind of gadgety, you know. It's 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 that that that's gonna change, and I think it's just gonna get really mainstream when we have the proper devices. And what's the proper device? The glasses? Yes, some sort, so, something people want to wear. I mean, it's it's all about vanity in the end. And I, I'll go back to my. My, my demo of AirPods versus Bluetooth, you know, headsets, that as soon as it, you know, becomes something that people want to wear, people are, I mean, the, then people will get the devices and then the developers will stop developing for it. So that's, that's how it has to go. Okay. How many people have played Pokemon Go, Ross? 
Uh, is it a billion already, or what? Is it one billion? Not sure. It's a billion yet. I don't yeah. know the exact number, but upper hundreds of millions. So, so that's and then, pretty mass market already. And that's most people's first experience is like catching a Pokemon in AR. Yeah. So like hundreds of millions of people around the world have played or have experienced augmented reality in a simple form. Okay. So where do you go from there? I mean, how do you make the next one? bigger and better, and how do you make it magical? Because you're going to tell me, oh, bigger IP. OK, <laughs> but beyond that. Uh, well, it's Can you say the IP, or you can't? Well, uh, Harry Potter is Harry the Potter. next one coming out. I can't say other IPs, but yeah. it's kind of Niantic's in a good spot. Um, well, it's one of these interesting things. Will I be able to turn Tor into a uh, I don't know, a beautiful princess, or oh, please, <laughs> with, with my land, is that how it's going to work? Uh, so I can't go into the specifics of what is the mechanic, but I would encourage all of you to play. It's a really, it, it, it's going to be cool. Um, When's it coming out, can you say? or uh, 2019. 2019. I, 2019. I've literally had people like stand around me and be like, you can't talk about Harry Potter. Okay, in a sense. good, so, like, fine, I, I I'll stop. <laughs> I'll be nice. Um, but no, we're in this interesting position that you like literally can't do a 10x just um, from the game just because there aren't that many people on the planet, um, just because Pokemon Go is such a massive hit. Um, so at least for like exploring what are more of what you can do, how can you fulfill the fantasy, how can you get more people out there exploring, socializing, and exercising, which is the core mission of Niantic, um, and then have that be in continuing to engage and like doing that things with Harry Potter in the short term, but then also expanding this as a developer platform that anyone can build this all with all of the experience and lessons learned that we've had, which let me tell you is immense. It was yeah. interesting going from a startup company and doing high tech um, to then going into Niantic and being like, holy crap, they had to do what? <laughs> I'm going to take another question from the crowd, uh, which is, uh, again, taking it away from games. And uh, the question is, what is the most important thing that AR will bring to the business world? And I think you touched upon it a little bit. Is it volumetric video? Is it simultaneous workflow? Is it something else? Tor? Uh, I, I often think about AR bringing more you know, value to not just, the, as I said, the office workers, but kind of being able to you know, in the health industry, for example, I think that AR will, you know, be incredibly uh, useful for doctors, getting all the anal analysis, being able to, you know, help with procedures and stuff like that. But I, th I think, like, all in all, I think it's going to be a great way to deliver information really quickly to you while in the midst of something else. I think that's one of the things that AR is going to be useful is, is that you don't have to have the computer there. You can actually, from the context, from your location, from what you're seeing, analyze what you're doing and get straight feedback you know, in the corner of your eye or wherever. I think, I think that's going to be very empowering for a lot of professions. Cool. Ross? At least for the business world, there's two ways in which to answer the question. One is like the broad vision um, of, OK, giving the information that is contextually relevant um, for the location. Like, OK, you want to fix something, you want to have a plumber come in, you can, all, you can connect people and they, they can help you with that. So it's a much more intuitive interface than like looking at a piece of paper or looking at a screen and then trying to imagine it in the real world. So, at least, so that's the more long-term vision, giving you the information that you need to be more effective in the world. The shorter term is like, where is this useful, like, going to be in a couple of years? Um, so then I would say, like, laptops, I think, are going to be really amazing. Um, I view that there's been a lot of uptick in instruction and training. Um, so, like, saying, hey, screwdriver goes in here. People, like, make less mistakes. Exactly. Um, so then I view that that's probably the area in enterprise that's really going to grow tremendously. Um, but I view for that, you need to have your hands free, which then gets you away from the mobile. So mobile is pretty good for the consumer and gaming um, aspects. But then headsets, is what Thor has been talking about, will make, that'll be, you'll see a lot more incremental improvements in enterprise. But, like, there's kind of a nice gradient there. Well, I view there's kind of a cliff that you need to go after for the consumer space. I think it's going to revolutionize IKEA manuals. <laughs> Just imagine. You don't you can see the thing there. And they're already doing that. I will still do it wrong, <laughs> I'm, even with AR. I will, still, I will still have to start again. What's amazing is like Niantic is known as like kind of 
the one of the leading AR companies. But then I've been on so many of these panels, like IKEA is brought up so many times that like <laughs> I agree, they're, they're doing really cool stuff. There. I mean, does everyone really? And uh, I guess it's just so annoying to put them all together. <laughs> so I like I like we have three minutes left, and I like to put in two questions more. Uh, one is from the audience as well, and I think that's more like to the entrepreneurs out there. It's 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 funny because it's a question I I see coming more and more. Is how many players will we have in the market when it will be finally developed? Is this going to be like a winner takes all and Android and iOS is go are going to take all the value? So you know Google and Apple will take all of the AR value, or is going to is it going to be multiple players, multiple billion dollar or more companies uh, uh, created? I mean I would say obviously it's a multi well kind of example, um, yeah. multi-billion dollar industries will be created out of it. Um, so then if you think about smartphones, like that really helped Apple rise up to become, I'm not sure if it's still the world's most valuable company, but among them. Um, but then like Uber was made, like Instagram was made, like Facebook mobile, like really got developed. Like there's been so many billion dollar companies that have come out of that, that I, I don't see a world where that does not happen. Um, I view that there are new areas in AR that will develop, but Cool. I, I think Apple and Google are going to be instrumental in this. I mean, let's face it, they control everyone's phones yeah. at this moment. Yeah. Uh, there will be companies, software companies, that are going to make great applications, and we will have billion-dollar companies from that. However, I would really love, because uh, as we said before, I think it's going to go from the phones to something else. And even though like uh, Google and Apple are the prime suspects to bring something, some device like that to the market, there is still a chance for some you know, okay. great company to come and be a part of that. Perfect. And now in the one minute and 20 seconds we've got left, I'm going to ask you a question and each give you time to also make, maybe make a conclusion with that question. And that question is a two-part question. The first part of the question is, what is the most fun thing that you and you will do with AR in five years' time? And then as part of that question, is do you think AR will have a net positive impact on the world or a net negative impact on the world? Is it just the latest gadget technology, basically? Do you want to go? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so at least the most fun thing that I'm going to do in AR in the next five years, um, well, everyone talks about like the dystopian world of like there's going to be ads everywhere. Like I, I really can't wait to make like AR ad block. <laughs> <laughs> AR ad block. So then you walk through the world and like all billboards become cute cats and then uh, like and even to that thing or expanding upon that just having a personalized experience that like I always say if you look at the world and then I want to see cute cats everywhere and you want to see cute dogs and like your version of ad block or even just the experience that you want like that that type of personalization um, I think is really great. And is that positive for the world? Um, I would say, well, ad block people download that. Um, but at least in terms of having the world as you want to see it, I would say that's a positive. But I would say technology is neutral, and then it's up to us to decide whether we How want we to make it. good or bad things associated with it. Or to I, finalize? I, I just can't wait. 20 to seconds. Be at a conference like this, having my, my classes on, and having face recognition compare, you know, to my LinkedIn uh, profile, and being able to like recognize and remember the names of everyone I meet. I think that's going to be a huge Perfect. positive impact for the business world, not to forget names. So Sounds good. <laughs> Thank you very much to you both. Yeah. We're out of time. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you.